Hello guys! In this video I want to continue to discuss my previous video when we talk about that we have a bunch of uh, vectors, a finite number of vectors with distinct eigenvalue, and I show that those vectors are linear independent. So let me continue that set of video and actually show why do we need this result. So in this video what I want to discuss, I want to say like if I'm giving n by n real matrix, and I know that for this matrix I'm going to have and distinct eigenvalues. So then in this case, A is going to be diagonalizable. Uh, what does it mean that A is diagonalizable? It means I can find such invertible matrix P where like if I'm going to multiply my A uh, by P inverse AP, then resulting matrix is going to be diagonal. And actually I'm going to prove this formula. So let's start our proof. And first I'm going to use one assumption. I'm going to use that A has N uh, distinct eigenvalues. So let's say lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda N are distinct eigenvalues. Okay. Uh, so what does it mean? It means like for the corresponding eigenvalues, we can find the corresponding eigenvectors. So in other words, uh, let's say v1 and vn are corresponding eigenvectors. So what does it mean this is an eigenvector? By definition, an eigenvector it means that a of vi is equal lambda i times vi. So if we're gonna take our matrix and act on our eigenvector, it's gonna be we're gonna get a vector which is originally is parallel to vi. And where i goes from 1 to n. Okay. And then you're saying, so what? Like, we have like this n number of eigenvectors, but then we're going to create our matrix P. And what is our matrix P is going to be? But before let me discuss the notation about the i. And if I'm going to write my vector the i, so my the i is going to be have the form uh, the i1, the i2 and up to v i n. Okay, and then how are we going to create our matrix P? And we're saying let's make our matrix P to be equal v1, v2, and v n. And uh, by using matrix multiplication we know that uh, matrix P should be a square matrix. And so here we can see that each column of our matrix is going to be just our original and eigenvector. And what we can say about this matrix? Since uh, we have n distinct eigenvalues, and that we've proved in another video, we know that matrix is invertible. Why? Because the set of these eigenvectors uh, is linear independent. So from here follows that P inverse is invertible, uh, since uh, V1 and Vn is linear independent. So I have that this vector is a linear independent, so P uh, inverse exists. Then what is, it was, uh, this was our first step, so let's discuss our second step. Let's take our matrix A and multiply by our uh, matrix P. In this case I will have the P as that A multiplies by V1 and Vn. And here I'm going to use a matrix multiplication, so I'm going to multiply first row by first column, first, second row by first column. So in next video I'm going to show this is actually true by using computation, but you can double, you can check that uh, this is going to be equal to a v1, a v2, and a v n. And why is this true? Because basically what I'm saying, I'm saying let's multiply the whole matrix by the first column, the whole matrix by the second column. But what do we know about our VIs? We know that there are uh, eigenvectors. So I can write this as lambda 1 V1, lambda 2 V2, and lambda N Vn. And here I can see that this is my first column multiplied by constant lambda 1. But then I can write this as a, a multiplication of two matrices. And what I'm going to do? I'm going to write this down uh, as v1, v2, 
the n and times by matrix lambda 1, 0, 0, 0, lambda 2, 0, and 0, 0, lambda n. So we can see like uh, the first row by first column, and we're gonna get like uh, all numbers except uh, v1 is gonna be equals to zero. And you're gonna see this by the computation. And here I can see what is my uh, v1, vn, what is my v1, v2, and up to vn? Is my matrix p. And what is this one matrix? Let's name this matrix to be my matrix D. Then I have uh, P times D. So from this step, I got that A P equal P D. But, and I almost got this formula. And the only things that I need to do, I need to multiply by P inverse from the both sides. So we'll have P inverse A P equals P inverse P times D. So from here, I'm going to follow that P inverse AP equals D. Yeah. And again, we are allowed to multiply by inverse of our matrix P because the set of eigenvectors is linear independent. So P inverse exists. So this is really important. Yeah, and we're done. So next time, if you have a matrix n by n and you want to ask if this matrix is diagonalizable, it's going to be for sure is diagonalizable if it has n distinct eigenvalues. And then you can ask yourself, okay, what in case if I have matrix in the form 1, 1, 2? Is this matrix diagonalizable? And actually, yes, it is. Why? Because P in this case is going to be just identity matrix. But I have repeated rules. So how I'm going to, when I know if I have repeated uh, eigenvalues, uh, if this my matrix is diagonalizable or not. In this case, we need to study Jordan canonical form. And in my next videos, I want to move towards that direction. Also, in the next video, I want to compute a concrete example uh, with a given matrix A, and I'm going to find its diagonal form. And uh, P, by the way, is called transformation matrix. And, and transformation matrix. Yeah. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please like this video and subscribe. I'm going to really, really appreciate this. Thank you.